Welcome back to the Cutler Report. I'm Larry Kudlow. Our top story tonight, the Obama presidency may be facing its most serious political crisis as millions and millions of Americans wake up to health care cancellation notices the president himself said would never happen. Now, how can Mr. Obama defend the indefensible? Our other top story this evening, a new all-time high for the markets. The Dow closes up 111 points. The S&P makes another new high at 1772. We're going to take a closer look at your money just ahead. But first, President Obama not once, but repeatedly assured his fellow Americans that if you like your health care plan, you're going to be able to keep it. That's what he said. Take a listen. If you're one of the more than 250 million Americans who already have health insurance, you will keep your health insurance. Americans like their doctor, they will keep their doctor. And if you like your insurance plan, you will keep it. Let me repeat that. If you like your plan, you'll be able to keep it. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. Period. Well, we now know. 50 to 75 percent of the 14 million people can expect insurance cancellation pink slips. Exactly what the president swore they would never do. Is this President Obama's read my lips moment? Well, let's talk. We have CNBC contributor, former governor from Pennsylvania, Ed Rendell. We welcome Hadley Heath, independent women's forum senior policy analyst. And one of the 14 million, by the way, whose current insurance policies will be canceled under Obamacare. And we bring back CNBC contributor Robert Costa with us again. Hadley, let me go to you. They canceled your policy. Did they tell you why? They told me my policy simply wasn't compliant with the Affordable Care Act. They told me, here are instructions for signing up for a different plan that is compliant with the Affordable Care Act. So the insurance company didn't beat around the bush. They told me this was a direct result of Obamacare. Ed Rendell, welcome back, sir, as always, former DNC head. Hi. Former governor of the great state of Pennsylvania, former mayor of the great city of Philadelphia, a man of immense political experience. Will you tell me how President Obama is going to squirm out of this? He said it wouldn't happen, and pink slips galore could be up to 15, 16 million people before this is over? Well, it's a horrible mistake and an unnecessary mistake. What the president clearly should have said is, for over 90 percent of Americans who have health care, you're going to be able to keep your plan. You're going to be able to keep your doctor, etc. Some of you have health care plans that won't meet the standards that we raise. And over the course of time, it may, it, it may cost you a little bit more to get on a new plan on, on the exchanges. But over the course of time, because that new plan will cover so many things that your current plan doesn't cover, you'll actually wind up saving money, which I think would be the case. For example, most of the cancellation policies that are being canceled don't have prescription drug coverage. Well, that's okay if you're healthy, but as soon as you need a, a, a statin or some a prescription drug that you have to take to maintain your health, boy, if you don't have coverage, your bills rocket. That's no. why so many people wind up uh, in bankruptcy court. Yeah, okay, but uh, Robert Costa, a little bit more. I mean, we're getting reports from all but a handful of states of massive increases in premiums. I mean, there is sticker shock going on. In fact, you've got a double here. You got people losing their insurance and then being offered a second package that is much more expensive than the first package. Now, I don't see how that plays politically, much less in terms of the actual insurance. Democrats do feel like they're in a good position on Capitol Hill when they look at individual state exchanges like in Tennessee. But what Republicans are going to try to focus on tomorrow when Sebelius comes to Capitol Hill and elsewhere is talking to individuals about the disruption of their own health care plan. That's what Republicans think is a salient political point. All right, but wait a minute, let me stay with that just for a second. Salient political point. Who is to blame? Who, Who? is to blame, Robert Costa? In other words... Uh, the president, he ain't talking. You know, his routine is, I didn't know about it until I read it in the papers. That's what he always says yeah. about everything, okay? And I'm not being sarcastic. That's what he always says. Robert Costa, doesn't the Republicans have to drill down? Ms. Sebelius, when did you know that this was going to happen, that these pink slips were going to come, and that all these uh, premium rate hikes were going to kick in? Don't they have to drill down on her? 
The question is, is Sebelius the right target politically? Because the president is really at the top of the administration, and the Republicans know they have to grill Sebelius tomorrow when they come to Capitol Hill. But in terms of being a political face that they can put ahead of 2014 and run against Sebelius, she's not, she's not the, most, uh, the best person for them to, to, as a target. So I think they're going to try to find a way to make this a hypocritical argument against the president and tie in the president himself. Well, um, Hadley, let me just ask you on this point. I mean, I'm looking at it in political terms. That's the point of this segment. And is it enough to really generate grassroots support, Tea Party, whomever, to renovate the Republican Party, get them to win in 2014, is the sticker shock of the higher premiums and the pink slips, as I call them, the cancellation of the insurance, is that going to be sufficient to rile up the Tea Party types, as was the case back in 2010 when this all first surfaced? You know, this new story about all the people who are losing their insurance due to cancellations, that's just one of a long list of broken promises that go along with Obamacare. I do believe this is enough. This is a transformative law. It's something that gets people excited. We saw that in 2010. And if you want to know who's to blame for the failure of the exchanges, for the failure of the law, it's every lawmaker who voted for it, and it's the president who signed it. It's that simple, and I think that's a message that will resonate at the grassroots and across this country. And Rendell, what would you advise the president right now? He's in a sticky spot, okay? Okay, everybody's got him. You know, he's dead to cold in the water. You got him with prior statements. It's not true. And by the way, it's not just insurance companies. It's doctors also. A lot of people are going to lose their doctors. Um, what would you advise the president to do? Well, I'd advise him to say basically what I said. Look, I made a mistake when I said that, but the people who are getting the cancellation notices were canceling you because your plans don't provide enough coverage to make you safe. And we want you to go on the exchange. Now, although those people are looking at increases, a lot of them are be eligible for subsidies through the exchange. So people have to look into it and see whether they're subsidy eligible. If they're subsidy eligible, then they are actually going to wind up paying less. And over the course of time, if they're covered for something like prescription drugs, they'll wind up paying less. And, and Larry, for all of the bad news, and there is bad news, no question about it, there's some good news. There's some employers with 80 employees who went on the exchange, and all of a sudden they're finding that they can offer their employees better coverage for a lower price. So it's, it's a balance. There are winners and losers. The Tea Party will focus on the losers, and it'll gin up turnout. I, I have no doubt that, uh, uh, that that's the case. Uh, so it's a big plus for the Republicans politically. Well, you do. Well, no, Larry, uh, look, I got, I got to disagree with that, because as somebody who's had my plan canceled, I can't tell you how paternalistic sounds for the president or anybody else to tell me what kind of health insurance is better for me. I was very happy with the plan I had before, and that's the way I think a lot of Americans will feel when they get those cancellations. See, hey, hey, a, real, a real quick point, a real quick point on Governor example. Rendell's point. Ahead, governor Bob. Rendell brought up a great point here. A lot of Democrats privately say exactly what the governor said. The administration needs to get ahead of expectations on this law, to lower expectations politically, that implementation is going to be perfect, that coverage is going to be, uh, everyone's going to keep access to their current Absolutely. plan. The gov that's what Democrats are really talking about. Can politically the administration start to be a little more frank about expectations? Do you think he will? Robert Costa, follow through on this. And, and first of all, part of him keeping ahead of the curve, whether he likes it or not, is Secretary Sebelius. All right? She's the curve tomorrow, and we'll see how the GOP handles that. But in other areas where the president sort of denied any knowledge, all right, I could name him the IRS and Benghazi and all that other stuff. He has never been one to get out ahead of the curve. He's always one to say, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know, as the circumstantial evidence piles up. Which is it going to be this time, Bob Costa? I think this is the administration's signature law. And a lot of Republicans today on Capitol Hill were telling me, well, we're going to see if Secretary Sebelius apologizes. That's not the question about an apology. The question is, can the administration own this? I think the Governor Rendell is bringing up a lot of valid points that Democrats here are privately talking about, that can the administration not only lower expectations for implementation, but can they own this as a political project so as it continues to roll out, they can raise expectations and lower them accordingly? You know, I never figured out, we got to get out of here, I welcome everybody, I never figured out why Governor Ed Rendell is not the chief of staff. I just never figured that out. <laughs> Successful governor of, uh, of uh, medium, you know, middle ground state, you know what you're talking about, you made a lot of good sense tonight, there you have it. Hadley Heath, thank Thanks you. Right. Former Governor Ed Rendell, thank you. <laughs> Bob right. Costa, thank you, as always. Now, the other big political story in Washington, the budget negotiation.